Good evening, everyone. Ads here from Unity Trading Group. Welcome to your Monday evening update. And it really is evening at the moment. A little bit of a later session tonight than I would usually do, but better late than never, of course. Uh, before we start, hit that like button, tap the subscribe button if you can, and of course, tick the little bell to stay updated on all of our future content. BTC, I want to get right into this as quickly as possible tonight. BTC. Last week, we spoke about the eventuality of our 61.8 at 62K thereabouts, roughly, uh, to be the next level or a level of interest if we were to have a breakout you know, through the level that we were currently looking at uh, just to the left of price action. So I had a level drawn in from left to right and uh, we did draw our fibs from swing low to swing high which was here at the time. And the level that I was looking at, if we were to break through that resistance, which was at 57K, uh, was the 61 extension on our Fibonacci. And that played out very nicely uh, over the course of the weekend, which we, uh, which we made, which we held true in the Discord. Thank you all very much for following along in the Discord. Uh, if you're not part of the Discord, the link is down below in the banner and of course in our description as well. But in any case, we have moved down for a pullback that is, you know, it is currently warranted. Uh, it is something that BTC did require. And uh, I think we can all agree that we were pretty overbought at that point uh, when we were, you know, trying to test that 62K mark and we didn't stay there very long at all. Uh, only a, a period of 12 hours we s we spent around that level and we only tested it only once uh, with the wick on the 14th of March. So pulling back quite nicely now, we have made a lower low in the way of our price action and we have dipped below our most recent level of demand, uh, which was at the previous top. Uh, so that level is toast and the next level I'll be looking down towards the 23.6 or of course the 54K mark for BTC. And that coincides nicely with our level of demand. And if we are to throw in gravy train for good measure, it would seem that it would line up very nicely with the bottom of our green cloud there. So the way gravy train works is if it turns green, uh, we are you know gearing up for a bullish scenario. Uh, of course, if we are to come down, retest the cloud and then continue up, this cloud will stay green okay and the trend will continue uh, so if we go into gray it is a period of reversal or it is pause in the trend so this could still come up retest that that bottom of the cloud and continue to the upside it's only when we break through the cloud and close that the cloud will turn red and of course you'll get the cross down signal and then you can assume on this time frame that we'll start a, uh, a downtrend. <clears throat> That's what uh, Gravy Train's saying, anyway. But more information is required for the for the minute, and of course, I'd be looking towards that level at 54k. And if you want to get involved in Gravy Train, you can with the link in the description. I do uh, I do recommend it highly. But in any case, looking at the 54,000 mark for BTC. And uh, that writing is on the wall currently with our break of our current demand, uh, which is at around 57. So a close below this level is really key. Two and a half hours to go. It is 8.31 p.m. Melbourne time. So uh, I'd be looking at around that 11 p.m. tonight to see if we do close below this. And I'll probably keep you updated in the Discord as well. If you're not part of that, link is down below. Next one I'll look at tonight is Ethereum USD. A uh, little bit of a different you know sort of sort of mind frames different sort of price action here uh, for eth so we did break through our level of supply there and uh, we didn't really get the follow-up that uh, that eth was really needing so the follow-up being the negative 27 or the level of supply we've got up the top there so an interesting one for eth but uh, really it uh, it is necessary for eth as well if you're looking at a lower time frame scale of things like a one hour uh, which steamroller in particular is way more accurate uh, on the one hour time frame gives you more up-to-date signals 
uh, for Ethereum, it was a warranted move to the downside, uh, just like it was with BTC. And if we are to see Ethereum anywhere, it would be the 720 mark if we get there at all. There is some price action on the one hour time frame to really resist us or hold us up from that level at 1720. So I'd like to see that level hold. If we're looking at the four hour time frame, however, it paints a little bit of a different picture uh, for ETH. And the price action that I would like to see is 1704. If we're looking at the four hour time frame, look, in in all in all though, uh, let's be let's be real. Uh, the the market is still quite bullish, and uh, that has been apparent. Uh, you know, with BTC, you know, reaching another all time high at si around 61,962 ish, uh, as we saw just previously. So the market is still bullish until proven otherwise. So we are expecting bounces. And of course, the next level for ETH that I'm looking at is 1720. Next one I have a look at is ADAUSD is one we usually look at. So coming down a little bit further now for ADA, the price action is quite sporadic to the left hand side. So it's a little bit tricky to draw these zones in admittedly, but I'd be looking at something like this where we've got a pause in the market just here and a retest to the right hand side. If I were to say something, and it's gonna be words of encouragement to all of you who draw supply and demand, this is extremely difficult to find, uh, something like this. It would be very difficult without current price action to determine where this level would be. So it's not like I had this drawn in from way back when and expecting price action to double bottom here or anything like that. That is not the case. Uh, I'm looking at this level now as we have a retest on the left. And of course we do have two retests uh, v more recently than that. So uh, it is a little bit harder to find of course, and it is uh, now valid uh, as we have these retests to the left. If we are to see it come down further in terms of ADA, I'd be looking at the 85 cent mark, like I've said previously in our previous update videos, of course, uh, I'll nip that up a little bit more, give us a little bit more of a buffer at around the 85 cent mark. If I'm throwing on gravy train, however, uh, we're in the same sort of scenario where we turned green and we are in a moment of indecision now. And uh, of course the gravy train cloud can hold us up in terms of price action. You can see if you run a horizontal line across that level, uh, just to the left hand side, you do see some uh, hard amount of liquidity on that level there. It would be apparent at the 89 cent mark and of course the 91 cent mark in that sort of range there, you will find a little bit of liquidity to the left hand side to uh, validate that cloud support on the gravy train indicator. Moving on tonight, I'll have a look, quick look at XRP. There's a few things that have uh, that are pumped today, but uh, I've only got limited time tonight. It is 8.35 p.m. So uh, we need to get through this as fast as possible. Uh, now we're looking closer towards that 41 cent mark, 41.5 cent mark for, for XRP coming down at 78.6. Uh, the last line of defense, in my opinion, for a Fibonacci retracement. And that lines up quite nicely with our level of demand down the bottom there. Not much more to see uh, for XRP besides the fact that if we do get there, our steamroller indicator is going to be quite satisfied uh, for a lower range and that market swing will uh, hopefully start to bend the other way and then we'll get some more upwards momentum for XRP. Last one for this evening, not the ASX, it'd be Forex. The DXY is a regulated market, not financial advice, of course, just ideas and opinions of Team UTG. So with the DXY, I wanted to get rid of that level of demand because the price action that I've observed today has been quite sporadic. And of course, we've been seeing a lot of wicks and not a lot of candle body closes. As we're seeing right now, we are underneath the 23.6 in the way of fibs. We have created a lower high as our trend does continue towards this trajectory, which is the downside. And uh, I'd be more than happy to see uh, the DXY back at the 61.8 at the 91.22 mark. And that would probably take the next couple of days. And of course, we'd see that more than likely around Wednesday evening Melbourne time. This can easily change, however, with the volume increase that's going to come in tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow evening uh, for our time. But it's looking like that trajectory will 
come to an end or, or come to rest at least in the immediate term at the 61.8 and uh, I'd expect like I said tomorrow and Wednesday to take place for that to happen could happen sooner but uh, I'm looking more towards the middle of the week for the DXY we are you know not even comfortably below the 50 RSI for the DXY currently we are looking just above it but any sort of downside this evening or this afternoon sorry excuse me this evening uh, is going to warrant us or is going to push us further down underneath that RSI level. So it could it could meet that 61 sooner than we anticipated, but we'll have to see. Putting Gravy Train on, this is a very similar thing that I've spoken about tonight. The lower band, we are in a grey zone, but the lower band acts as our level of support. And of course, it works all the much better on uh, Forex as it does crypto and uh, it does line up very nicely with the 61.8 and of course our level of demand so three confluence areas uh, for that 91.22 for the DXY. Thank you all for joining me tonight. I'm Ads from UTG. Uh, if you want to know more about Gravy Train you can follow the link below in the description. It is our life's work currently for UTG as far as life life's work goes uh, for uh, Unity Trading Group. Uh, we're very excited about it. We thank everyone who's jumped on board so far and we've had nothing but good reviews on it. There's more content coming, uh, of course, in the next few days. I just need to find some time. Uh, today was a day that I had off, but it wasn't really a day that I had off. I had a lot to do in the background. So hopefully I can find some time this week to record our video about uh, alerts and uh, how Gravy Train can help you when you're away from the charts. And of course, you know, with bots and everything like that too, if you're into that. But anyway, enough from me, ads from UTG. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye for now.